they, the split brain reveals that there's a left brain interpreter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, you know, because when we look at the history of humanity, our egos have taken some hits, you know, we're not the center of the universe, you know, and then Freud said it's mostly unconscious processing that determines things. And then, you know, we're just fancy apes. And so we had to deal with Darwin. And, but I think the greatest blow to our ego would have been the interpreter realizing that there's this thing, this machine and uh, neural machinery in the left brain that's always creating stories. And the way he discovered this, so he split the brain, so the corpus closed them. So we have two pretty independent uh, left and right sides of the brain. They even have their own blood supply. So you can like put the left brain to sleep. They're held together by two, maybe 400 million nerve fibers called the corpus callosum. But in some cases, when a person had really bad epilepsy, it would cross the corpus callosum, and then the whole brain was involved in the seizure. So uh, um, Roger Sperry, who got the Nobel Prize for this, he thought, well, what if we split the corpus callosum? Like literally cut it, severing all the connections between the left and right sides of the brain. Would it have any effect on the epilepsy? And the, the wonderful thing, it really did. So these patients would went from like, you know, uncontrollable seizures to something where they could get a job. They could actually, you know, get back to their lives. But the strange thing was something called disconnection syndrome. And so there, now this is another mystery we don't have solved. Like the brain is cross-wired to the body. So the left brain controls the right half of the body. The right brain controls the left half. It's all cross-wired down in, by the spinal cord. All the nerves cross. Now you don't know if I move around because I pretty likely I have an intact corpus callosum. But in these patients, you know, when they raise their hand, that's solely the left brain if they raise, raise their right hand. And if they raise their left, that's completely the right brain. And so they went, well, first there were these uh, really unusual situations where, you know, a patient would go home, they, this patient smoked, so, you know, they would light a cigarette, and the left hand would keep putting it out. And, and it was very frustrating because they're like, you know, the left hand is doing its own thing. And uh, another with the patient was, you know, it was the 70s. They had these old click remotes and finally, you know, uh, perusing through the channels, find something he likes. And then the left hand came and turned the channel. And so another, so there's another patient who was able to go to work for the first time and was in her closet picking out something to wear. And she goes, picks out this dress and the left hand put it back. And she had to call her daughter. She's like, just hold that left hand, which is to say the right brain, which is having its influence, you know, hold it back while I get dressed. So they brought him in the lab. And what they were able to find is that even though your right brain isn't the main language center, it can read. So they were able to flash commands to the left and right sides of the brain. And people complied. So if you flash something to the right brain and it says, raise your hand, the patient raises their hand. When it got weird is when Gazanica would ask them, like, okay, why did you raise your hand? Now, what we're supposed to, so the left brain, it's controlling speech. So what they should have said is, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, you know, I don't know why that left hand does its doings. Uh, but that's not what they said. In fact, spontaneously, very, very quickly, and confidently, with certainty, they provided an explanation oh, you know, my hand was falling asleep, I needed to stretch it. And so they were so good at giving up, you know, again, go get a Coke, that goes to the right brain. And the patient would get up and then they'd say, well, what are you doing? Oh, I was just bored, I had to get up and walk around a little bit. And then they played things like, you know, a burning, uh, a fire with, you know, people getting hurt. And they showed that to the right brain. And so the left brain is just sitting there, but it feels the nervous system increasing. It, you know, it can feel like, you know, the fight or flight response. And the left brain's just sitting there and it starts making up stories. And it says, oh, you know, normally I like Dr. Gazanica, but today, I don't know, he's scaring me. And all these, all confabulations. And the, the whole insight is that we, us normal people with the corpus callosum, we've never, you know, the vast majority of the population that's never had brain sur surgery, we're doing this all the time. Our left brain is telling us stuff. Oh, she doesn't like you, you know, at work. Or, oh, you know, your coworkers, you know, you deserve more money than them. You know, one story after another story after another. And, 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 and you know, the transformation, like we we're when we started talking, 
is from taking those stories seriously to seeing them as just this narrative function of the left brain. And then you start to laugh. It's I don't know what it, it's something funny about. It's, yeah. like, it's a I bit mean, of a cosmic right? joke. 